Good evening. Um, welcome to the Selectman's uh, regular meeting at, on November 16th, 2016, here at the Town Hall at quarter of nine in the evening. Um, we are had an interesting evening interviewing. And um, Wendy facilitated a good um, group of people in the evening, so thank you, Wendy. Um, first item on the agenda is the minutes of November 9th. I don't know if you've all had a chance to look at them. I did. I'm good. Are you good? I'm okay. good. Uh, oh. Uh. Oh, we tabled this, right? Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay, good. Uh. Yep. Okay. Make a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of November 9th, 2016. I'll second it. Okay, is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, aye, so it's three zero. Um, as I stated earlier, absolutely wonderful. Um, the work on the Stillwater Bridges has started. Mm -hmm. We don't have a completion date yet, but uh, the fact that it started before the winter is fantastic, so that means it will be done. Um, Board of Health comments? Oh. Oh, I, I sorry. To, I think okay. this will, is proper to fit in here. At the uh, sewer study committee last night, uh, there was a request for $4,000 to do some engineering to see if Captain Lathrop Drive could be gravity fed and, and do away with the pump station. Um, I expressed concerns that, you know, I have checked with people who were around at the time of the construction and that it couldn't be done. Um, but... Um, the board voted to uh, ask the board of selectmen to appropriate or give or however you got, we do it the four thousand dollars so they can uh, do their little study and measure the pipes to see if it could be converted to gravity fed and do away with the pump station. Would that be Weston and Sampson? Yes. Okay. And so you're recommending it to us? Uh, it doesn't sound like it. <laughs> He's reporting it. I was, I, I get, I'm the chair of the board, and, and the board voted for it, so I guess I'm bringing that recommendation forward. So, <laughs> you are actually now part of government. <laughs> no. So okay, the, no. the, uh, the issue, though, is that the concern is that the, the water table is so high that you can't bury it any lower, right? Uh, or is it, was no, that the no. concern? The, I didn't know. The, 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 what would ultimately make it? not work as if there's not enough elevation change okay right. um but it was brought to my attention during that discussion that the sewer main at the corner yep. near the monument is quite deep yep. and it takes a radical step up in front of the high school yep. and it continues going uphill down north main street yep. Uh, yep. so the thought is is if they can you know come across the brook and get into North Main Street with the Captain Lathrop line, uh, then it, they would have to bring it all the way down to that corner. Because yep. there definitely is, it, is not enough elevation change to tap into it right there. I see. So it would have to, a separate sewer line would have to be brought all the way down. But if in fact that could be done, yeah. that would eliminate a big headache. For yeah. The, okay. The I understand that, that that pump keeps going and, and they're fighting and fighting and fighting to keep it yeah, running. Yeah, you know, I, I have not actually got in there to see what the issue is i i, I mean i i understand exactly what they're saying but right. to me it, it i don't i don't understand why it, it yeah. has that problem but right so I guess it runs and runs I'll, we're investing yeah. a lot of money on it on a regular basis so yeah, I, I, know. Know. I know so I it know. seems so like i mean uh, from a from that point of view i think it's worth ex spending a little bit of money to yeah, well, try john, to get an answer john john Petrick thought that it was uh, not a lot of money to spend to get, to get answer, a solid and, answer. Um, no, I, it's, where, it's okay. and where do we fund that from? Uh, uh, free cash? Sewer, or do, no, the sewer, sewer reserves. reserves. Okay. Yeah, sewer reserve. Then there's plenty in there, yeah. I assume. Yeah, well, not plenty, but, but enough, enough to cover, cover $4,000. I do that. Did I say that right? <laughs> okay. okay. And you, do you guys both agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The committee voted that last night. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so I'll entertain a motion. <clears throat> I make a motion that we uh, approve those 
the study to I don't want to make this too long. Up to four thousand dollars. Up to four thousand dollars to uh, convert the Captain Lathrop pump station to a gravity-fed system. Second. Is there any further discussion? Nope. Um, okay. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let me. Um, all right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then I'll just take it. Yes. And, oh. um, and also a discussion about when you'll meet again on the follow up to, to Yes. Meet. Oh, sure. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Oh, Unless yes, there's Wendy. something else you want nope. to discuss. No, That's no, good. we can okay, certainly you. go down there. Um, so the question that um, Wendy wanted us to address is the extension for the New England Natural Bakers. For the purchase and sale. Yeah, yep. purchase and sale. Now, it's, it doesn't have an actual date. It just says the 20th day after they've been satisfied that we've fixed any issues. Is that good enough? That's what the council said. Okay. Okay. All right. And this on the back, is this yeah. saying anything more? Or is it just the usual no. here on two? Can I just yeah. look at that real quick? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. What were you speaking to? The um, well, we have to straighten out the I know. posting. So right. um, how we screwed up on that. Yep. So it's just the 20, they, they have to close on it by the 20th day after we fix up our screw up on the posting, however it gets fixed. So, so hopefully, we don't really know when it's going to be fixed. Well, do you, we have sort of a, have we had any indication from Steve? Uh, actually, council's working with, through Steve, with the governor's council. Oh, nice. So it might be relatively soon? Could be. Okay. Yeah, I don't. It's a political answer. Well, there are other yeah, things I know. that are yeah. going on, too. I got you. Uh, okay. Well, um, do you want to make a motion to do this? Sure. I'll make a motion to um, uh, sign the extension for the purchase and sale agreement for New England Natural Bakers. I'll second the motion. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Yep. And then um, maybe we can meet on, we were thinking of, I have a um, MAPCO meeting at 4.30 uh, that I have to be in Greenfield, but we were thinking maybe th 3 o'clock. It works for you, works for me. Monday's good. 3 o'clock Monday? Yeah. I think that's what's going to work. Um, Okay. Oh, you know what? You, you didn't sign I'll, I'll follow okay. up with an email to remind you and yeah. just things to think about. And okay. that'll give us time to post that, right? Gives us enough time. Yes, right? it yep. does. Okay. We can't yeah. post for Friday. It's too late. But Friday. Monday we can. But okay, Monday good. we can. If um, it gets posted tonight, I mean, yeah, tomorrow morning. Right. Yeah. It should be okay. Um, so, so Wendy, is that? Yeah. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so, so any much. Thank I'll, you I'll for follow all your up help. with you. Okay. For Monday. If there are any yep. questions? And Wendy, thank you so much. Thank Welcome. you very much. I really, really appreciate your. No, I know you. I, I, do you want this? Or you? Okay, sure. Okay. Um, thank you. Have a good night. We don't have a recommendation from the personnel committee, so we can table that. Um, we point Margaret Dole to the Fred W. Wells Scholarship Committee. We had a letter. Did you guys see that yeah, letter? Where is this? Oh, where is this? Do I have a different agenda, maybe? Oh, I, have, I don't have the same one you have. Well, boy, I don't know what happened. I think this is an old one. Oh. I have a new one. Uh -huh. see, this one's for November 16th, though. Yeah, but yeah. I think it was. I think that was the rough draft one. Can I just make copies? Of yeah. That? Cool. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I've already. Oh wait. Is you that have another one? No. See that's, no, that's, see, that's, that's the one we have. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Something was added. I think. So I'll uh, cut your own special paperwork. Um, you oh. know what it is? We I send a draft 
do a draft, and I think this was the one she printed out was a draft one instead of the. And I had gotten the the final one. At home. So oh, okay. I think this is why she printed out the wrong ones by accident. I don't know what was that. That has a note on it though. Okay. Thank you so much. We're going to have to have more of these meetings. It's the only thing that keeps me up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Can gosh. Do every okay. Two days? Um, so there was a letter of interest <clears throat> from Margaret Dole to the <clears throat> yes. member, member we had. I did see that. Oh, you did yep. see it? Okay. Yep. It was the Fred W. Wells Scholarship Committee, so Great. I make a motion. Did you see it? I don't want to. Uh, I, I heard of it. I okay. Okay, I make a motion that we appoint Margaret Dole to the Fred W. Wells Scholarship. I'll second the motion. Mm. Um, is there any further discussion? No. I'd just like to say thank you because that yes, was thank you opening. so much. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, we had the um, there was a possibility of a donation that it went to. Um, Montague with no problems, but there was um, a donation for hiring a conservation expert for our moratorium, and we do not have a donation account for that um, for that mm -hmm. legal expense. So um, I was going to change, make a motion to change the donation um, account to include the pipeline issue in case it came back um, and the moratorium that we're not funding this anymore it's just oh no no this is effort. donations it has been donations right. we okay. had received a donation already but it went to Montague but what happened is um, Montague's town hall is normally closed on Friday yeah. so they were closed on Thursday instead as for the holiday mm -hmm. and so this donation was going to be coming in, and they had there was no town hall open to do it. You yeah. know, they weren't open, and so I was. They just needed verification that they were tax exempt yeah. organization. So I was going to have Pat come in and just send a letter saying the town of Deerfield is duly incorporated and is tax free. Okay. You know, ta this is our tax number, and um, then they were going to wire the money. But okay. What happened is they said as long as they got did it on Monday morning, you know, from Montague, mm -hmm. that they would be fine sending it to Montague okay. as long as it got done by Monday. Because yeah. I guess they had to do it by some deadline. I see. So, so um, this is just allowing us to take a few Yeah, but that made me think that, geez, we, we should have the account all set up. Right, we have to if, if we do take if, that. If we take donations. So, okay. But because it was limited, you know, t to the pipeline. Right. So, um, so the language would be... Um, Pipeline in moratorium, mm -hmm. Berkshire gas moratorium issues or something. I'll, I'll work with Brenda to come up with the exact wording, if that's all right with you that's guys. That's fine. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, who seconded oh. it? Did, uh, did anyone second you, it? I'll second it. Okay. You made the motion, right? Yep. Okay. Well, yeah, I was trying to explain it. Yep. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The opportunity for money was good yeah um, we had a meeting um, last Thursday night of the municipal coalition against the pipeline and um, there is a real possibility that the pipeline will mm -hmm. come back we'll they'll reapply them. so um, the communities are very concerned so we just started organizing and you know how to, we divided up jobs as far as, you know, monitoring information. And I think there was some discussion, which was kind of interesting, um, is that Donald Trump had said in the past that he was going to um, release the oil reserves, which are in Cushing, Oklahoma, where they had that earthquake. Mm -hmm. So huh. I guess there's some incentive to release the oil reserves because 
because they feel some of the tanks are at risk because of the oh. fracking um, uh, earthquakes they are having out there. So I, people were really thought it was a screwball idea to take down the reserves before, but now everyone agrees that maybe the it's reserves should the be instead one. right instead of having all the reserves in one place and it's kind of an unstable place is to move the reserves is to release some of the reserves and then spread them out all over hmm. so i don't know what's going to happen but that That's means gonna, the price of oil is going to come down and if the price of oil it maintains its low, there's no incentive right. to invest in infrastructure for gas so right. i'm i'm not really sure based on that kind of information how soon an application is going to come through but right. it's worth keeping an eye on um, I'm hoping that you know before there was incentive to have it you know go along the mass pike they have to use the thicker more expensive pipe and mm -hmm. the heavier welds if it goes along the mass pike but it's so less disruptive oh, it is. and you know, and, I, and like again, I, having the cheaper pipe and the cheaper welds, just because there's fewer of us to incinerate, just does not seem right. So, right. anyway, I'm hoping um, that if it does come through, it will come through along the Mass Pike yeah. or something where there's already, you know, uh, infrastructure, you know, slashed through the landscape, right. and that it would be the least disruptive yep. to people. Yep. I don't know. So but anyway, this is just information. Yeah, this Correct. is just information. Yep. We it's speculation. Um, it, we, so we just divided up how we're going to monitor information, what, what we're supposed to do as jobs. And, okay. and we're going to continue to meet now again okay. on a regular basis. Um, I was kind of hoping this would, would have been done. the last meeting. But. Okay. Anyway, um, so that's just so I wanted to give you an update. Um, I really don't have any other information or business. Uh, can you, Excuse are you me. guys do anything? I don't no, okay. I, I, not at this time. I didn't have a chance to talk to Dick today about his uh, meetings this afternoon in Pittsfield, but uh, he did he, say he, that. Oh, the um, yeah, yeah, that yeah. Um, they're going to have to come up with some solution on the zoning. Okay. So that was, it was an interesting discussion. Yeah. And. Um, you should touch base with them because that that Mr. Duvendorf is really um, excellent. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I was, I told him that I would go with him, but yesterday morning I stopped in here to do something briefly, I thought, I thought and it was I was tomorrow. here. Well, yeah, I thought it was too, but he hijacked me and reminded me of another point, so I, I was out of work all day yesterday, so I, I couldn't take another day off. No, no, that's fine. I, I felt bad I couldn't, but I got, I, I'm taking that 300 ICS 300. Tomorrow's the test, so and I we gotta, have warrants to sign. Yep, we got warrants okay. to sign, and that, then I will oh. adjourn this meeting. Oh. If there's if there's not anything you can think of, we are meeting on the on Monday, and we yeah. will. So that that is not true. There's no meeting Thanksgiving week, <laughs> but at least it's not the day before. No. And uh, <laughs> question for Trevor, since we're here, he might know. Is it true that the elementary school gets out? They only have a half a day every Friday, except it's, if there's a holiday on a Friday or a Monday. It's not every, but it, it they do their um, their um, professional developments those days. So what was happening before is when they did. This has been going on. This is the second year they're they're doing this schedule, and and they're able to group all the teachers in the union together to do these every Friday, or you know, sometimes it's every other. What was happening before is they were pulling, they were putting a lot of substitutes in the classroom throughout the year, and then they might go months before they would get back on a subject again or a, or a topic again. It's kind of been a double-edged sword for the community, for parents um, that have to find childcare, so they do offer uh, childcare at the school. Um, but it is, a, it is a disruption for some parents, and the schedule is tough. It's definitely been very helpful for continuity of information for the for the teachers in their professional development. They're able to do longer sessions um, more often, so uh, they're able to kind of get really in deep on some of these projects and some of their education. So it's um, 
it's really helped a lot. I think, you know, if you listen to the teachers and the IAs, not as much as the IAs. I thought they were, they felt they would get more out of this schedule than they have, and they're working on ways to do that this year. But the, um, if you listen to the teachers speak on what it's meant for them as far as development and being able to get stuff um, and transfer it into their education in their classroom for the te for the kids it's 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 meant a lot it's been a big a big change for them and a, and a big benefit um, but it's not always well received throughout you know all the parents have not been happy with it so does it affect the number because it's a half day, does it count as a full day? In other words, is the state going to give us a hard time because the kids aren't going to school long Right. No, it? no, they still have the same amount of time. Uh, it's just that they, um, you know, without, I'm trying to think of how, it, how to put that. They, um, they, have a, they, they would have had it in a full day session, but it would have been so much more spread out. Right. So they've, um, it's still the same amount of time that the kids are being taught, and it's actually more time they're being taught by their primary teacher because a lot of times before a lot of subs would go in so now the kids just aren't in that class at that time before they would pull the kids you know the teacher out to do a development professional development for the day and there would be a sub in there they're having a hard time getting substitute teachers as it is right now um, and then here they're getting more classroom time with their with their main it, teacher i don't know if that I, answers any of that but there was a lot of problems with um, a lot of substitutes. It seemed like there was substitute issues. There is constant right now. Well, I, 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 I raised this question because yep. where I was working is it's next to a, a home that has a, a, a ten-year-old, mm -hmm. and he's around a lot. And I, I was kidding. This <laughs> is don't you go to school? And he says, "Oh, we have half days every Fridays. Well, except for if there's a holiday on Fridays, then yep. then it's this day, and then but then we do it on Mondays. But then the teachers get this day off and." I, was, I started counting. I was like, well, you know, how many days do you really get off? And he says, well, you know. So I, I was I, curious. Yeah, I could give you the <laughs> schedule, and then and I do have the schedule of what they do, and then also the um, all the all the professional development is just a massive spreadsheet of all this stuff that these teachers are learning and and then transferring into the classroom. It's been a huge help for education and for the kids. Um, not so much for the kids. You know, the kids. I, I would love to have them in school more. I wish they'd go to school longer and more hours. Um, more education you can give kids, the better off you are. But um, this might sound funny coming from me, but I mean, it, do they teach children other things than English, you know, geography, science, yeah. math? Well, you know, believe it or not, what's reading, happening? You know, grammar, right, whatever. Yeah, they do, and uh, there's a and and there's a lot more. Um, the teachers are facing a lot more issues with social-emotional social learning. So the, some yeah, of the... From the students. From the students, yeah. The kids are coming in with a lot more needs than we've seen in the past. Um, severe needs of, of education. Um, even just, you know, functioning in a classroom with other kids to be able to, to, be able to take the learning. The school right now is a little bit uh, upended from that. Um, in the kindergarten grades, the younger grades, are, um, it's filtering through the whole school and really affecting just the way they can teach during the day because they're constantly, the, um, the, um, sup the adjustment counselor, the principal, the psychologist, um, maybe that classroom teacher is, is, is almost daily or every other day dealing with an issue um, that, that stems from um, the child's capability to take in knowledge. Um, they're just not, they're not prepared and ready just in their fundamental ability to just take in this knowledge. So there's a lot of, they're putting together a task force right now um, to combat this. It's not only Deerfield, it's, it's all across the state from when I was out at the um, school so committee conference. So there haven't really been any analysis so, yet. Correct. There, well, there, it, there's a lot of analysis, and like the collaborative has put together whole social emotional learning. Um, it's it's really gotten, it's really taken over the educational. But it, has it has it been determined whether it's a learning disability or is it a behavioral? It, it's problem? almost well, it's both, but it's a lot of it is uh, societal 
you know, uh, the kids are coming to school a lot more. Environmental. When, uh, yeah, environmental and, and just yeah. the, the, the family structure that they're in or just the time that the parents are with them. Or, and I don't want to blame it on the parents, but it's just, it's, um, it's whatever is going on in that, in that family or environmental with the child and their learning. Um, they're coming to school, and you, this isn't, ha I, I don't know this to be happening here, but when I was at the, at the school committee conference, they did a, a whole co conference on um, violence in the school and, and just stuff the kids are dealing with. And well, some of these kids, not, not in our district, but some, the guy was giving an example where, you know, the, he goes as part of DCS, he goes to this person's house Mom's coming out on a stretcher. Dad's coming out in handcuffs. The two kids are coming into DCF. Um, the next morning, the guy's picking up the kids, and where does he bring them? School. Kids show up at school. They don't know if mom's okay. They don't know if dad's ever coming back, and they're expected to learn, and their teachers are expected to teach, and they're just dealing with an immense amount of social issues, um, and that's on a large scale, but then you have all these other other issues that the teachers are, you know, forced to educate and deal with, and the schools are tasked with dealing with it. It's just an immense amount of work for. It's not like you said. If it was just teaching math and writing and arithmetic, that kind of thing, that would be that would be really nice. But the but the teachers are are forced to deal with, and, and administration forced to deal with so much more of societal's problems and it's really hard to get an education into the kids yeah. and it affects all the kids that are, that are there ready to learn they've done their thing they've they're they're set and ready to learn and then they can't because there's all this disruption going on so they're tackling that right now as a task force coming together to help with that but i think we're just seeing the beginning of that hmm. long okay. answer sorry the, no no but are they are they are they doing that attaching that to any like drug use or it's all of that i mean i don't want to say that's the issue here because yeah. i don't know and we, we have no idea yeah. but but as, as a society yes i mean the heroin epidemic the yeah. um, you know just a, a you know might be physical abuse at home or mental abuse at home or just mental you know they're not able to care for the children or the children are you know on devices more than they should be and getting you know whether they're doing studies about how much stuff is going into their mind at an early age and how they're able to then transfer that into you know social skills to how to sit in the class still without you know and to take in information and learn without you know having to get up and move around and so they're making a lot of accommodations and they're doing great work at Deerfield Elementary uh, Mike Anderson they've brought in um, to kind of teach different ways to set up the classroom so that some areas will have a standing desk, you know, like Donald Rumsfeld used to use. They're just, he wouldn't sit at a desk, he would stand at his desk. So they have standing desks, different seating areas, just kind of different ways to get the kids um, okay in a place to learn and take in information. And um, they're doing a huge, and, and I think they, um, differential learning, I think it is. I'm, I'm, I could be getting that wrong, but they're, they're doing a lot of good work there to try and accommodate and find different ways to, to be able to educate the kids. Well, that explains the 200 cars at the elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, it's a packed parking lot for sure. All right, All right. well, almost sorry I asked, but no. <laughs> no, it, no it's, good. it's interesting and it's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot that they're dealing with and trying to give them every bit of support we can, but it's hard, you know? Yeah. Like yes. you said, the pie's only so big, but we're trying to fight, you know? And maybe with this question too, uh, being defeated, um, the legislature will hopefully take up, you know, some of the issues that we have We're complained to, about. I was just going to say in this, yeah. What, now, how they were talking about um, funding, trying to fund better. Mm -hmm. Did you discuss that? Yes. And and, and so the reform is going to go through. Well, we. Funding I reform? think what's going to happen Formula is reform? is they're yeah they're going to come back and look at. I'm I'm hoping Stan Rosenberg and other senators and hopefully in the House this time, will come back and deal with how they fund charter schools, how they fund all schools. Um, you know, try to get more money back in into the schools and. Um, there's a lot of issues about the charter school that just you know, 
weren't going to get addressed if it passed and now have the opportunity, not to say it will, but we now have the opportunity to maybe address some of the, the local oversight, how the money spent. Like you have a child from Chelsea. Chelsea spends about 24000 25000 a year to educate their child. And you have a town, you know, o over here that spends 9000 So when those two kids go to the charter school, Chelsea's sending twenty five. This sends this one's sending nine. They're not educating the kids differently. So it's just not really fair how that education's getting or the, how the funding is working for that. And they're 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 refunding back to the towns um, or the districts a hundred percent the first year. But then they're supposed to the next five years supposed to be twenty five percent. Well, there's they're not funding some years. So what's actually coming back is nowhere near, what we you know, everyone says, oh, the money goes, follows the kid. Well, it does for the first year. And then after that, it drops to 25%. And then the, me the next year, maybe nothing. And then 25%. And, and they only fund like an increase. So if you have children that, you have two kids go this year and then three the next, then you get it. But if you have two go the next, you know, you had three this year, you have two go the next, you get nothing because you've dropped. So well, it's really interesting. I've got a lot of data on that. I could well, the you part that. of it that I didn't think was fair is that you have, you know, a community. I'm not going to name a name, mm -hmm. but say you have a large community and they just don't raise enough money for the education and their schools suffer. Then you have a community like ours that funds their yes. education well. And so it isn't fair. It, it isn't fair because some communities just don't, you know, step up to the plate and spend the money on education that they need to. Right. So with this charter thing, you know, the, 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 the yeah the yeah. the smaller communities that are willing to spend the money end up paying you know, those are the more. ones that they go so right now it's an opt-in for charter schools and we'd love to see it be an opt-out yeah. so that all kids had a chance to go in because maybe you didn't you weren't an active parent and signed your child up for this yeah. um, so they're really kind of cherry picking the best towns that they they know that the funding mechanisms yeah. mechanism is there yeah. this is just hypothetical sure. on my part too but if you um, if you had everybody opt in you know, if you had to opt out of it, say, no, I don't want my child to go to a... So you'd get a better cross-section of the population that the local elementary school has to, like our school, has to educate everybody, no matter what they come with, yeah. with challenges sure. or anything. And with a charter school, they're supposed to, but really they pick and choose. They pick and, choose. and then so if, if they had to take a cross-section and everybody was opting, it was true lottery, then they would they would have some of the issues that, you know, that we have to deal with. You know, it, it would be a shared um, expense. expense, whereas now we're dealing with all the difficult, not that they're difficult, but just more, ex more expensive to educate because of the needs um, where they might not, may not, might not have to. Yeah. It's complicated, but it, it, there's no a good easy education. Solution, but there isn't. But there is a solution in the sense that the state just needs to cough up more money. It would mm. be would be helpful uh, they, or they they they've really slipped in how they've supported students i'm not kidding it's like 20 percent. you know the, the, the state government just like the federal government and like our government mm. you know oh, the money so comes much. from us right you know, know. and it just depends on how they allocate it true and, you know this the town has its certain needs but they make the us state, pay they, well i understand that but the state you know there's so many agencies out there all looking for money you know from a to z mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, in the state, I mean, only because Michelle throws this in my face all the time. Sorry, sweetheart. <laughs> but, you know, the, the state gets, I think, $800 million every year from this tobacco settlement. And they spend less than $2 million on what the money was supposed to be used for. Uh, and so the state themselves is breaking their own law. Right. Well, that's going to run out in a, not too many years. And this year they had a big deficit. What are they going to do when this money dries out too? Right, because you know? they're using it yeah. to fund fund other things, uh, yeah. reoccurring stuff yeah. instead of a one time. Yeah. I know. Yep. Okay, Trevor. I heard that motion to adjourn. Yes. <laughs> Second. All right. All right. Nine favor? twenty. All right. Oh wait.